Today we're going to be talking about how Google has changed ASO, specifically concerning custom store listings. Um, how many people went over to Dave Bell's talk just now? Okay, well, uh, there's some stuff in here that's a little more detailed about Google Play ASO and how Google has changed things with custom store listings. But um, yeah, a lot of stuff has been going on, Apple and Google, and just going to expand on this in particular because this is pretty killer for uh, organic keyword targeting on Google. So I'll go over a little bit about Gummy Cube and then getting into the broader evolution of the stores and kind of the arms race Apple and Google have been doing over the last few years and what CSLs are. Um, I guess, how many people have used Google Play's custom store listings at some point for their ASO? Okay, a few people. So I'll go over kind of the general concepts of them. Um, how about the iOS App Store? How many people have used custom product pages as part of their marketing? Okay. Pretty typical, a lot more people are using the iOS customization versus Google. Uh, Google has one more feature that's a little bit more advanced for fine tuning. Um, and then we'll go over what this particular search keyword CSLs is, how to use it in experiments, the available reporting metrics, and then some best practices for testing. Um, well, how's this one? How many people have used Google Play experiments? More hands, okay. Yeah, super critical thing to do for ASO. And then there's some AI integration. Want to go over the things to look out for with the AI. So who is Gummy Cube? We're an app store optimization technology company. We have agency style services. We're the oldest ASO company in North America. Uh, been doing this for 13, 14 years now. Um, we're a division of Airship. We were recently acquired about two years ago. So Gummy Cube helps you with your organic optimization, top funnel, conversion, all that sort of thing. And then for customer loyalty after you get the download, Airship can help you out, so kind of the full package. So what is ASO? ASO is keyword targeting. There's my slide, just kidding. Um, a lot of people think ASO is just keywords, which is absolutely not true. You can rank well for keywords, that's great, but then what happens when they see your app? You have to get them to convert. Um, what happens that gets you to rank well for keywords and the levers behind that, we focus on all those things, along with the conversion optimization and A-B testing I just mentioned the paid marketing that goes into the app stores that can significantly affect your ASO. So we focus on all of that along with some of this new stuff about growth, expanding your user base, taking a large share of the market share pie of the app stores. Your app isn't just a thing that's there alongside your website. It's a user acquisition funnel, essentially. It's not a vending machine where you can just say, oh, I you know, wanna get these downloads, people know my brand, blah, blah, blah. There's all these feature-based keywords that people are actively looking in the store for, and you can optimize your listing to focus on that, not just to rank for the keywords now with catch-all graphics, but also to customize them. We'll get into that. Um, another hand-raising one. How many of you have seen me do another presentation, maybe last year, anything like that? Okay, so you guys saw something like this before. Um, the reason I'm rehashing this is because it's evolving and continuing. I was right, my ASO crystal ball never fails me. So everything foundational, you still have to do. Keyword optimization, creatives, running paid campaigns to support your ASO. Nowadays, it's getting into more audience personalization. So there's in-app events for lapsed users, um, promotional content on Google Play, analogous thing. Apple and Google introduced those a couple of years ago. Custom product pages and custom store listings. Another analogous thing, you can customize your pages and drive external traffic to it. Um, now on Google, custom store listings got a huge update. There's product page optimization and Google Play experiments, yet another analogous thing. So this is kind of the first one where Google struck first, Apple has yet to answer. So we'll focus on kind of what they are and what is specific to Google. So think about your app and what you offer. In this example, you could have a photo editor app, something like that. It could have cloud storage, filters and selfies, ability to hide and delete pics. Those are gonna be different demographics that are looking for different things. And they can find you on those keywords, but then you have to make these catch-all creatives, those first three screenshots on Apple that appear in search results, for example. They have to speak to everybody. But when you're doing that, you're not speaking specifically to anybody. So when you're making custom store listings and custom product pages on Apple, you can target these users for Apple in search ads, for example, and make all of your creatives that show up focus on that, run A-B tests on them, that sort of things. So essentially, it's a more customized experience geared towards those audiences that you're trying to target 
based on what your app does and where it's at in the lifecycle, things like that. So again, not every user that looks at your main page is gonna want the same thing. And not every user that wants the same thing based on your marketing traffic source is gonna want the same thing. So the user journey from organic search is gonna be different than if they saw uh, an ad on TikTok and then maybe search for you later, or they got a, an email blast, or they got a paid direct link from a meta traffic, for example, search ads I keep mentioning, obviously. So they're not new. They let you stop doing the catch-all thing. Um, but with custom store listing configurations, you can also fine-tune languages within territories. So you could have a user who's searching for you and their language setting is English UK. They're gonna have different uh, potentially legal guidelines that need to be entered into your description if they're in India, for example, versus uh, the UK. You can override your main store listing UK content specific to that territory, so it's super important there. Um, you can fine tune, again, your external and paid traffic, and you can change content based on user state. So if a user hasn't interacted with your app for 30 days on Google Play, you can send them to a different set of screenshots, icons, things like that. Um, Pre-registration users, if you're running pre-registration in a certain territory, you can send them there. Um, the new thing is organic search keywords. So you can have your screenshots, icon, title, the whole thing on Google Play be different for users based on what they search. Um, so what it is and was it, what it isn't. The data for this has been here for several, several years. You can go to the uh, store listing conversion analysis page and you can see some limited data on what users are searching for and what they find you on, visitors and acquisitions from Google. Um, that's called search keywords. You can check out your dev console and search for that. Really important is that Google has no impression level data. So that might be why you see my conversion rate on Apple is 5% uh, from search and it's 30% from Google from search. What's going on? My Google Play is so much better. No, it's not. You're just looking one level deeper in the journey and that's why it's tagged that way. Um, it's not every keyword that you see. So when you filter this and the availability of this new set of features from Google, typically apps with more install volume see more keywords in the future. So if you have a brand new app, typically it'll say uh, maybe your brand name and maybe a, a feature-based keyword, one or two, and then bundling everything else into other. And even if your app has tons of installs, it's top ranked app in the category, there's still this other that you can't see. So you'll need to use ASO software to track how you rank, where you rank for everything that you're looking to focus on. Typically it's 20 to 80% of keywords that are bundled under other that you can't understand. But for the ones that you can understand, you can use this new feature on Google. I stopped my presentation. <laughs> okay, there we go, I did it. Um, so CSLs and CPPs, um, custom store listings, custom product pages. This is the Apple and Google, same thing. What's not the same, look at that. Um, this is the iOS app store as you see a product page. So you have the icon, the first video or screenshot, and then the remaining screenshots appear in the set. This is the Google Play Store product page. The layout is super different. What you can do with these two features is very different too. Apple's CPP feature, which it sounds like more people have used, you can do screenshots that are unique. The 110 instead of 170, for some reason, promotional content can be customized. And then the video, if you have one, can be customized. That's kind of it. On the Google Play custom store listings, it's basically everything you can do on your main store listing, which includes your icon, your title, stuff that's not editable and customized things on uh, Apple's platform. Feature graphics, screenshots, video, short description, full description, the whole thing. So you get more configuration options, plus more of this stuff appears above the fold, quote unquote. So a user sees more of this content and more of it can be customized. So it's a lot more powerful, I'd say, than what Apple lets you customize with their custom feature. So it's a lot going on. New capabilities, search keywords. So this uh, traffic lane graphic here is sort of all of your organic searches and where they land. So you can group together all of these keywords that are focused on one concept. Again, they have to be available in the developer console. Typically apps with more traffic will get more keywords. But you can take all of the keywords and Google will give you the ranking data, but you can look at which keywords am I ranking well for, conceptually which keywords should be grouped together. This is a hypothetical uh, fitness app, right? 
So you can take all of the diet focus keywords, group them together, and make a custom store listing with, again, your icon, title, all this, focus specifically on that. And then you can make another one that's all about cardio, for example, like jogging and running, blah, blah, um, weight training, muscle building. These audiences are gonna be different, and they're searching for different things. Um, so with a lot of the, a lot of the things that have changed in the last few years with like who you can fine tune to target in paid ads, for example, um, we don't need to know anything about this user's profile to understand them demographically. We don't have to ask them to share their data. They're looking for diet planner. They probably are a relevant demographic for the diet focus aspect of my app, right? So you can target them directly without needing to know any private data about them. So it's super powerful to do that. And then the rest of it would go into your other keywords, main store list and catch all. Um, but you wanna do as many of these as you can with the data being statistically significant. So I'll go over that in a sec. Um, depending on how big your app is, you can either make up to 50 of these custom pages or up to 100 if you are in Google's premium developer program. So available keywords, uh, where do they come from? I already kind of mentioned this. It's in the developer console, more traffic volume. Usually you get more keywords. They can't be entered manually, unfortunately. You can't just pick whatever. So using the keywords that Google gives you, you can make them into a custom store listing. I went over like a hypothetical fitness app earlier. Um, this one could be a puzzle game and there's like uh, brain training aspects like IQ, learning, memory, that sort of thing. And Google gives you this limited data on how many visitors, what percentage of visitors come in and conversion rate. And we can use uh, you know, third grade math to figure out the acquisitions from the conversion rate. So it gives you that data, that's great. Um, but what you do not see is impressions. It is a mystery. These are not there. So you might be running a test based solely on the visitor volume that you get. These are my best keywords as Google reports them. But what happens if you're running, for example, this app, and you search a diet planner, and you got like ripped dude getting yoked icon and title tags, right? Um, maybe they're not looking to your app and clicking on it for the diet, healthy recipes, that sort of thing. They don't find it relevant. They find other apps that are relevant for that. So you might get a lot of impression volume for features that you have. You just don't know it. So if there is something that has a substantial amount of volume, and if you can see that you rank organically pretty well for it, that might be worth doing like an icon and a title uh, custom store listing on. So think about this as like where you're at and the impression volume and how you rank for where you need to be. Um, this is another one, so a few of you went to Dave's, this is in his slide too, but um, so this is an example of a confirmation bias type of thing where there are all these airplanes that were coming back in for repairs during World War II and they were looking at where the bullet holes were and putting armor on those. Um, and then one guy said, why do we just put the armor on these? Because those planes aren't coming back. So that's the impression volume. You don't know this and of course they put the armor on it Less planes go down because it fixed the issue. So think about what it tells you and what you can't know because it doesn't tell you that. Leverage that against your ASO software, layer the transparencies over one another and see where some shadows are cast. Um, basically put the armor on the engines. The impact of search keyword CSLs on ASO. So how Google indexes apps. This is kind of a broader overall how Google does this. Um, there is no declared keyword field in the Google Play Store like the iOS App Store has. So it looks at the content in your metadata fields, your title, short description, full description, crawls that content, and it'll try you out for some keywords. If it finds you relevant, it'll index you on that. And if you start to get some taps, you'll stay ranked for it. If not, then you'll go away. Um, strategic keyword placement is important for the Play Store. So like these darker spots, when Google crawls it top to bottom, left to right, it's where you want to put your keywords for Google to crawl you and index you on. So the apps that are relevant and get the most taps will rise to the top, and then the apps that Google doesn't find relevant and maybe it's ranked for a little bit, but there's no engagement in search results, it's going to de-index them for those keywords. So how does this apply to search term CSLs? So these are indexed. Keep in mind your whole store listing gets indexed. And if Google, by way of the content that you're writing in your metadata, and users, by the way of the visible creatives that are in your metadata, find you relevant, 
They'll search for you, they'll find you, they'll tap on you. That'll send a signal to Google that you're relevant for the keyword and you'll maintain and over time index better in uh, search results for that. The opposite is true too. So you might try something out and your ranking might go down if Google finds you less relevant. So this is something that should be implemented and measured. Definitely recommend doing a Google Play experiment before making a bunch of these changes just to see how that affects your conversion rates and day one retention, all that kind of stuff. So it's a double-edged sword. Um, ideally, it should help, but you know, you could, I've done tons of A-B tests in Google Play experiments. I'm like, this icon's great, and this one, no one's gonna like that. Um, proven wrong, that's why we test. So make sure that you're testing everything, uh, forming a hypothesis, running a test, building on it. Um, and then make sure, again, you're using ASO software to assess your performance. How did my keyword ranking move? Google doesn't tell you that. It'll tell you if visitor volume changes, acquisition volume changes. You might find some new keywords in this search area, so you can check that out on Google but definitely look at ASO software. Um, you can think of it like a custom product page. So Apple's custom product pages are only for page traffic externally with a URL or for Apple search ads traffic. So if you're using Apple search ads on the iOS app store, you can connect a custom product page to an ASA ad group, which more or less would look like this where you have the like each keyword the keyword one's back here. I'm going way back. Okay. So the keyword, you can think of this like an ad group in Apple search ads uh, here. This is your campaign, the organic searches. This is your ad group, a diet focus. Structure your campaign that way. Connect it to a custom product page so the creatives would look like this on Apple. Can't do as much customization. And then you can drive traffic to that ASA set and see what your tap-through rate, conversion rate is, what the impression volume looks like, what your cost per acquisition is, for example. Um, set it as a baseline phase, and then do your uh, A-B testing when you have your uh, different set of screenshots that are more focused on, in this example, the diet app, right? And then you learn from that, maybe you apply it as the control, and then you run A-B testing phase two based on what you learned. Don't wanna change too much at once. Probably a bigger sweeping change when you're focusing on one specific thing like the diet app. And then down the line when you're fine tuning things, it could be like, which meals am I focusing on? Do I have enough traffic to find a subset? about meals, um, and then that's how you do it. The same thing goes for CSLs, except you can run these tests concurrently instead of, or simultaneously instead of concurrently, and you can have up to four options on here, uh, control and three variants. So if you have enough traffic volume to facilitate doing that, definitely recommend doing it. The data at the same time is better because there could be week over week trends, things like that. I'll get into that in a little bit, but having it structured and conceptually thought about like those custom product page A-B tests you can do with search ads, um, probably a good way to get started. Definitely recommend doing this before fully deploying it though. Um, it seems logical that this would work. I'm using the diet keywords for my diet audience and doing it that way, right? But definitely recommend testing it before you deploy. Google Play experiments. So without custom store listings, Google lets you do up to five of these maximum. You can take your main store listing and your different subsets of your language localizations and run A-B tests on those specific ones. With custom store listings, you can have 50 pages and therefore 50 experiments running at the same time. Obviously, you would need enough traffic volume to facilitate that. You can actually have 100 if you're part of the premium developer tools that they recently opened up. Um, when you multiply 100 by four to get the different versions you can have, so you can have a lot of screenshots out there. Um, so before you go doing that, make sure that it's going to be enough volume and you have enough relevant niches that you can focus on. Um, this is also something that you can do for external traffic, so it's not just organic. When you make custom store listings, again, it can be territory-based and then subsets of languages in there. It can be Google Ads based. You can hook up different Google Ads IDs. So if you have a campaign where the headlines and descriptions say a certain thing, you can close the funnel by making your screenshots, reiterate whatever they saw when they clicked your ad to get here. <clears throat> now you can do the search keywords. Um, there, user state is something else you can do. So there's a lot of stuff you can do. You can essentially do unlimited because 100 is a lot. Um, but when you're doing that, think about do I have enough traffic volume to make this test matter? So for this set of screenshots, apps for David's that are doing workshop, 
I would convert, great. Um, then what are you gonna do after that, right? So think about drilling down your different demographics, like the diet focus, for example, and you could get into like keto diets versus low, uh, low calorie diets, things like that. The creatives that you would show would be very different, like the food on the plate, for example. But how many visitors and acquisitions am I getting for keto-based keywords? And how many keywords with keto in it are ranking in the top 10 for that impression volume that I can't see? And if it's not gonna be long enough, you're gonna be running this test for a while, which is fine, but trends change over time. Your app will change over time. The longer you run these, the more irrelevant the data will get if you leave a test up for a year, right? Um, so when you're running Google Play experiments, think about it like this. There's, you need roughly 300 to 400 store listing acquisitions per variant in order for the confidence interval to come back from Google. So if you're doing an A-B test, that would be 600 to 800. If you're doing a four-way test with your control and the other three variants, that would be 1,200 to 1,600 total, and then you, you know, divide it by the subsets that you have. Um, so see how much install volume you're driving and see if you can reach confidence within one to two weeks. Even if you have tons of downloads and this is no problem, we still recommend doing one to two weeks because your Saturday downloads might be different than your Wednesday downloads, right? So you wanna be able to establish trends, but you don't wanna leave it up running through like the holidays and the new year and Valentine's Day and everything because the conversion trends might change. Um, I think that's what I was supposed to say on this slide. So you can all just look at it for a while. <laughs> um, so yeah, what can I test in the CSL? Um, you can test everything on your page except your app title. A lot of people want to run A-B tests on their app title and Google Play experiments. It's just not a field where you can do that in. Um, we have SplitCube, it's a software at GummyCube that lets you A-B test using external links, um, your app title, for example. Um, but for the store, you can only test the other assets on your page. Um, what matters most for te testing? Typically, the app icons have the biggest swings in conversion rates, um, good or bad. So um, you can run icon tests and um, it's not that they're better or anything, but when you're searching for feature-based keywords in the Google Play Store, only the icon and the title and your star ratings and things like that show up. You don't see the screenshots. So typically that app icon is going to drive more uh, high or low performance in your Google Play experiments. Keep in mind these Google Play experiments are visitor to acquisition ratio. It's the, uh, the acquisitions are really all you see. So you can't get a sense of like, am I converting better from an impression like you could understand with Apple's data. So um, that all being said, icons typically have the biggest swings. Short descriptions have a bigger impact than full ones because when you're on an Android device, you have to tap the short description to read the full description. So people might not even see it. Um, that being said, those don't mat not matter entirely. We have seen some performance wins and uh, insights from running full description tests, usually at the top. Um, is where you want to do it. And then as you get further down into the description, that's where you can do the structured keyword targeting with featured lists, bulleted lists, things like that. Um, screenshots are extremely impactful. Keep in mind if you have a video, that video will push your screenshots out in the gallery view. So you could be running a screenshot test, but you might have this video spreading his legs out in your gallery view and you can't see them. So you got to make sure that you're looking at if I have a video or if I don't, uh, your, your feature graphic will be the pause state of the video. So keep in mind those things. How does my store listing look? And how might a user interact with it? What do they see? Um, rather than just saying like, are screenshots good? Well, it depends, right? It depends on what your store listing looks like. Um, that's what I already mentioned. You want to account for weekly trends. This is just a mock-up example of Google Play experiments. So when you're running a Google Play experiment, it looks at the installs you get per day and this is an example where variant two, the pink line, is trending away each day from the rest of them. So look to see if you have a bump and then it returns to the same trend. Um, you might have a single day where traffic is anomalous and then it normalizes. Um, so in this example, variant one and the current one are kind of about performing the same. Definitely something going on with variant two. Every day, the delta between the two keeps getting higher and higher. And that's saying it's getting more downloads each day. So Obviously look at the confidence interval, the high and low range, but if you can see consistently and you've accounted for weekly trends, 
that you have a variant that's outperforming the control, it's probably worth applying and then measuring how it did before and after. So available reporting metrics. <clears throat> I mentioned the before and after. So the way that you can analyze performance for a custom store listing is the same way you should be analyzing it for anything. You can go to the store listing conversion analysis page and there is a filter up here, view by main store listing. Um, there's a bunch of other crazy stuff on the console. This is a mock-up. So, um, but at the top, you see view by store listing. You can filter it to the specific one that you want to target or layer all of the custom listings you have over one another to understand relative traffic volume. And make sure you're filtering it by new users in the territory that you're optimizing towards. <clears throat> you can also see the visitors from there, the visitors' acquisitions and conversion rate from that. Remember, impression data is not available. Um, some apps that we've been doing this with have reported no data uh, showing up for a specific custom store listing. Um, you can reach out to Google Help if you see that. Um, it's just a bug with Google. This stuff is pretty new. Um, so how to measure success? Doing a Google Play experiment, deploying things that work out well, and then measuring the impact of it by way of doing the experiment here. And then see if it holds up. See if the pre and post metrics, or year over year, depending on what seasonality looks like for your app, holds up to what performance increases you saw when you ran the experiment. Um, and then even if no experiments were run, you can see how your page is doing relative to the other custom and main store listings you have for your page. Um, so the way to look at this is each one of these lines is a custom store listing or your main store listing. And then look out for weird anomalous traffic or expected traffic. So for example, we were talking about that pink uh, option performing better in the Google Play experiment. And we can clearly see here the install volume has bumped up. And that didn't happen to my other main and custom store listings. This is specific to this one I deployed. This is definitely still working. Uh, versus this one where it's like, hey, installs are going up. I did it. Like, what'd you do? It's Saturday. Your installs go up every Saturday. So make sure that you are looking at weekly trends here. Um, also look at anomalous outliers. So if you have a one-day spike that goes up and goes down, think about if you did any promotional content on the Play Store. Think about if you did any marketing or social campaigns that would drive users to that specific page or your main page. So you can look at what you actively did in the metadata and the creative. But think about what changed around you too, right? Um, is there another team doing paid marketing that you need to collaborate with to see what they're up to? Did any trends change for your, um, in your category? So you can look at category ranking for the other apps in your category um, because that's determined by rolling download volume and velocity, right? So if everybody's trending up or down in the category, unless you're all calling each other up and doing the same marketing change at the same time, probably not, um, then something's happening virally or organically with the genre that you're in. So check that out too. Did any keyword ranking change that would explain what you're seeing here? Have you seen a competitor adjust their strategy? Um, is your Android vitals on bad behavior above or be below the bad behavior threshold? So um, this is, I mean, way older. This is uh, Google I.O. 2018. They announced Android vitals will affect your ability to be placed in the Google Play Store. So if you're over bad behavior for crash rates and app not responsive rates, Google can diminish your placement, whether it's being featured or ranking for keywords in the Play Store. So if you have a bunch of crashes that start, and you can check that out in the console, that might explain why your visitor volume and acquisition volume is declining. It's because Google is putting you on the blacklist because you're a low quality app according to them, and they're not serving you as much. So definitely make sure you're working with the engineering team on that. So again, assess what you actively changed and what is happening other than that. So some testing best practices here. Um, before you do any of this, make sure the metadata is optimized. So critical keywords targeted in the title. Uh, this short description is the second most heavily weighted besides the title. And then the full description, top to bottom, left to right. Is your creative optimized? If people find you, will they click on you and will they download you? You can be ranked for as many keywords as you want, but if you're not compelling, don't have a value prop that's better than your competitors or at least in line with them, they might not convert. <clears throat> so that'll be your icon, feature graphics, screenshots, and video. Um, and are you supporting ASO with paid? This is the foundational stuff you need to do. And if you're looking to index higher in search results, you'll need to drive more traffic to the app and it can kind of snowball from there 
Definitely don't want to do it before you have your metadata and creative optimized, because if you're running paid, it'll be good until you turn it off. It goes back to baseline. But you can get more sustained long-term growth if you set up that foundational ASO, drive some paid to it, and then see the slower um, regular download volume increases over time. <clears throat> the other thing for this feature specifically is Google needs enough download volume in order to give you these search terms to unlock to make custom listings on. So check out the Dev Console, see if you have any. And if you haven't run Google Ads, for example, that might be something to do um, so that you can drive more user installs and get more keywords to do more stuff with. So maintaining CSLs and MSLs, I mentioned 50 uh, maximum or 100 if you're part of the Premium Developer Tools program. You can do it, but I mean, make sure you're looking at it regularly because if you make a big update to your product, for example, if you have a huge update to your app, and you only update the main store listing and you neglect some of these more niche custom store listings, it's gonna have the old content on it. And the users who are someone that you formerly specifically targeted are not gonna see the latest and greatest. So in this example, you have like uh, German language users in the country of Germany and Austria. That's not the new one, that's something that you can do, um, whether it's for legal compliance text that these users need to see but not all German language users need to see, or it's because you have different features based on the geolocation of these users, that sort of thing. And then the rest of the world sees different German content if they're not in these two countries. If you only update your main store listing and not this, the, this is the most important demographic for this language and they're not gonna see the new stuff that you have, right? So make sure you're maintaining it. Um, just like with the traffic volume where it might be too niche to run a test where you get 300 to 400 installs per variant, um, make sure that the territory partitioning you're doing is also something that has a substantial amount of volume so that it matters. And if you're doing it, if you're setting up 50, make sure you're looking at 50 because these will get outdated if you don't. Um, one thing you can do, I forgot to mention, you can keep them long term or you can set them to auto expire. So if you have something seasonal and more ephemeral than a big update that you want your main users to see, you can set it to expire after a certain amount of days. So if you have a big marketing campaign that is no longer going to be relevant in a month, let's say, you can give it a timer. So structural best practices. Um, I did the hypothetical diet app, the hypothetical brain training app. As a broad concept, you can make a CSL for a feature, and depending on how many features you have and what the volume is for those features in terms of the visitors and acquisitions for what Google's giving you, keywords that you rank for looking at your ASO software because you can't understand impression volume in Google, what is there? There's editing photos, uploading photos, that sort of thing. Along with features, you might have specific demographics like groups of users rather than groups of features, so you can kind of pivot it sideways and look at it that way. You might have more or less custom store listings if you do it that way. Look at your competitors too. Um, obviously, you can't directly target competitors in the Google Play Store. You can index for them in search results if you have similar metadata profiles where Google goes, oh, this thing is like that thing because they both rank for photo editing and upload photos, da, 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 da. Um, let's rank this app next to this one for this brand. You can appear in search results, but you can't say, oh, if you love this app, you'll love my app because the uh, Google cops will come knocking at your email, tell you no. So if you do rank, again, using ASO software, you can see if you rank for a competitor brand, look at what they're doing in their icon and their screenshots and think about they're ranking number one for their brand, obviously. Um, I'm ranking number two or like top five, something like that. What does their icon look like? What's their title tag? If a user clicks on them and sees their screenshots and their short description, things like that, what are they saying? Because your competitor might say like, oh, we have you know, the most up-to-date stuff every 30 minutes, and then look what your product does. Well, we're updated every 15 minutes. Why don't we say that? Um, so you can competitively position yourself against these other apps and talk about how you're a better alternative than they are. So you can target your competitors specifically. Um, a CSL for your brand, this, <laughs> this is my brand. I get downloads anyway. Well, you can probably do better if you think about this user, where they're coming from, and get them more engaged in their app. So this is another set of keywords that can show up in the Google Play Dev Console. And these users are already familiar in some way with your brand and what you do. So the stuff that you're showing for the photo editor people and the upload photo people or the people who are looking for your competitors, it's going to be different than people looking at your brand. So you can skip a few things that you may need to tell the uninitiated if they are familiar with your brand 
or it might be even worse. They might have misconceptions about what you're all about, that your app is doing that's new, that they don't know about because all they've really seen is your email marketing collateral or something like that. And you can correct those misconceptions with your title tags, screenshots, that sort of thing. So don't just say like, oh, it's my brand, I'm good. Um, what can you do to, con to convert better? So all of these different things benefit from CSLs. So AI integration, um, Google Gemini is a feature within custom store listings of all kinds, including the search keywords. And you can click a button, and it'll auto-generate short descriptions and full descriptions. It doesn't do AI image generation. It's mainly the text content. The way it does this is it looks at your main store listing, and it looks at the group of keywords that you've selected for your custom store listing, and then it generates a description based on that. Um, great. It does not factor in current keyword performance, so how you rank for those keywords that you targeted and those that you didn't. Um, previous experiment performance, how did I do when I ran an A-B test that focused on these keywords and what language converted them best and I've been doing experiments for years? It doesn't look at any of that. Compliance guidelines, um, the Gemini robot does not look at its own guidelines and it also doesn't look at accuracy to your feature set. In fact, there's a warning in there that says this doesn't guarantee work with you know, what your app does or look at that or anything. So you can click a button and auto-generate it, but then you can get rejected right away, so look out. App quality. Um, at Google I.O., they announced a lot of different features and ways you can get your app promoted, and they've been doing that for years. And what they keep echoing is this subjective value statement around app quality. They have some specifics around it um, in their documentation, but none of that is going to be made by an AI content generator. Um, so they want it to be compelling, again, subjective, high quality, and make sure that it follows their recommendations and guidelines, which are two different things. If you look at Google's documentation, there's straight up guidelines that you need to follow or you will not get approved. And then there's some recommendations that they want you to do, and you can go live with them, but if you don't follow them exactly, you might not be eligible to be promoted. So if you're out of compliance, again, you can get rejected. Um, I was using this thing. Um, it completely scrubbed the legal text. It, like, if any of you have apps in the finance category or uh, uh, gambling or um, anything sensitive with kids, things like that, all of the legal compliance text at the bottom, the robot goes, here you go, and <laughs> it went away. So uh, make sure that you're reading it after it's generated, otherwise you might get into some trouble with that. Um, again, accurate, compelling, AI descriptions may not satisfy this requirement. Google recommends not putting anything about pricing or performance in the short description text. And the robot put free in all caps, so look out. Um, so how to leverage it usefully? I'm not gonna say like, oh, don't ever look at it or touch it, it's bad. Try it out, um, see what it generates, but make sure that a human heart and mind is looking at it and then thinking about core features and demographics, priority keywords and their placement, learnings from past tests, elements you haven't tested yet, your seasonality, it's not gonna know that, your branding guidelines, promo recommendations and compliance guidelines, and then look at how you rank for keywords and things like that. Um, it's kind of good to get an idea started when you're like, oh, I want these keywords and I want to make it be like my main listing, try it out, and then from there you can fine tune it with a copywriter who's looking at ASO software. So in summary, um, this is a powerful way to convert your organic users that has not been available before. It's not available on Apple, but given you know, back in like late 2021, 2022, there was the uh, CPPs and in-app events, and then Google does the promo content, the CSLs, and then um, kind of just going back and forth with those features that they have. So it would be great if Apple would do this too, because then we can target those organic users too. They don't have it right now. You can use it on search ads, but definitely jump on this because it's a new way to target organic users on Google. You can get more granular, but think about that funnel, and if you're funnel is only targeting like two people, it's not gonna be a great test, right? So look at your app, look at what Google gives you, look at how you rank for keywords, and guide your ASO strategies around that. Keep in mind what AI is and what it isn't. It's not magically going to make you something that converts everybody who sees your page. It can start some ideas, but you have to go to these other places to assess if that's a good idea, whether it's because of performance for your keywords or legal reasons, things like that. Structure your CSLs with intent. Test, iterate, build, keep stat sig in mind, so make sure you're running tests, you're looking at the pre and post, you're looking at year over year, using the dev console to see what the signals tell you. And that is it. Thanks.